You didn't have to decide whether you're going to obey him or disobey him. But how will you ever know how God wants you to live your life if you don't learn to listen to him? And not only to listen to him, but also recognize that God's timing is always perfect. We don't always agree with his timing. We have our own selfish reasons. But we need to listen to him and also to follow his timing is a great life. In fact, many people miss most of his blessings because they don't be his timing. They have their own idea. They get frantic. They get worried. They listen to the news. They listen to somebody. And on it goes. And never stop to think, God, what's your plan? What, what do you want me to do? When do you want me to do it? How do you want me to do it? What's your will for my life? I think our failure as speaking kinds of is a major issue. And if you were in the 12th chapter of Genesis, here's what God said to Abraham. He, he said, go forth from your country, from your relatives, from your father's house to the land which I'll show you. I'll make you a great nation, let you make your name great, so you could be a blessing, and I'll bless those who bless you and curse those who curse you. And in you, all the families of the earth will be blessed. Now, that is as straightforward as you can put it. That could not be clearer. And so God made, made it very, very clear what he was to do, what he was going to do. And so instead of following God's instruction, uh, he just had a little circuit and a little bit there. Listen, watch this carefully. God knows you perfectly. He knows what his will is for your life, his purpose for your life. He doesn't make suggestions. God gives commands because commands come from a man, a will, and a purpose that is absolutely perfect. He will never ask you to do anything that would not be his will for your life. His will for your life is always the best choice. And if you'll notice in this passage of Scripture, he not only promised him that he'd have an heir, he said, in fact, you go outside and look up in the sky and the stars that you see, your, your heirs are going to be like that. And then he told him that it'd be 400 years in Egyptian bondage. That he told him that he would die within peace with a good old age, and that he would have a land of heirs. So what God promised is exactly what he did. Now, that was God's choice. He said, I'm going to make you a name great, and all of us who believe us can trace, we can trace our lineage from today back to Abraham. And so I want you to the 16th chapter of, uh, of Genesis. And some years have gone by since God made that promise to him. And Sarah, Abram's wife, had borne him no children, but she had an Egyptian maid whose name was Hagar. When he left home, he was headed to Canaan, God's choice land. When he got there, they were having a famine, so he goes south to Egypt. He had no business bringing her from Egypt into his family. So Abraham was an awesome choice of God, but he made mistakes. And when he went up, there's something he doesn't say, and do this if you do it. You do this and do it. No, he gave specific instructions. Do it, you should have. 